Uncle, please, you are hurting me. Uncle, please. Oluchi, who was just a child, cried as her aunt's husband continued to abuse her. Life was a living hell for Oluchi. All this started when... her mother died. She was just six years old when she lost her mother tragically. Oluki was born into a family of ten. She was the last born of the family. When her mother died, they had to split to different relations. Some of her siblings had to go and live with their cousins and others went to stay with their aunties. Oluchi went to stay with one of their aunts who lived in a different town. When she went to her auntie's house, everything was going on well with her. She was excited to find a new home where she could find peace. The first day she got to the house, she was very happy to see the kind of house she was going to live in. She played and ran around the house. By then, her auntie's husband was not around when Oluchi came. He went for a business trip. But Oluchi's story changed when her auntie's husband returned from his business trip. His name was Mr. Ayodel. When Mr. Emeka came back home, everything changed for Oluchi. She started seeing hell. She found herself in a nightmare as she became the victim of Mr. Emeka's despicable acts of abuse from a tender age. One week after Mr. Emeka arrived, something unspeakable happened. Oluki was outside playing around the house when her auntie came to her and said, make sure you look after all those things I keep outside and also don't forget to eat your food when you are hungry. Mrs. Emeka instructed and left for the market. Immediately, Oluchi's aunt left for the market. Oluchi heard her name from inside the house. Oluchi, Oluchi. It looked like her aunt's husband was calling her, so she quickly ran inside to meet him. What are you doing outside? Mr. Emeka asked. Nothing, Oluchi answered in fear. Although Oluchi was only six years old, any little thing scared her. Mr. Emeka drew her closer to himself and dipped his hands into her clothes. Oluchi was only a child. She never understood what her uncle was doing to her. She just stood in silence. She started feeling some pain around her while her uncle kept touching her. Her uncle continued taking advantage of her till he got the satisfaction he was looking for. Oluki didn't feel much pain that day because Mr. Emeka didn't touch her deeply. But Oluchi knew in her mind that what her uncle was doing to her was not a good thing. After everything, her uncle dressed her up and warned her never to tell anybody. Oluchi was afraid of her uncle, so she promised not to tell anybody about it. That was how Oluchi's life changed for the worse. She kept growing up in pain, despite enduring months of torment. Oluchi remained silent, fearing the consequences of speaking out against her abuser. Even sometimes she would try talking to her auntie, but she ignored her. Mr. Emeka never felt satisfied because his wife was always around the house, so he wasn't able to satisfy his edge with Olushi the way he wanted. Sometimes he would send his wife to different meetings just to make sure he abused Olushi. He opened a mini supermarket for his wife in order for her to always stay at the shop at all times. He did this so that he would have enough time to spend with Olushi. Her uncle went further to start sleeping with her. He turned Oluchi into his sex slave. As Oluchi grew older, Mr. Emeka's abuse escalated. From six years old, she became nine years old, and then she continued to face her uncle, who always abuses her sexually when her aunt goes to a supermarket. When Oluchi was 12 years old, her uncle started having direct sex with her. Mr. Emeka was never bothered how the poor girl felt. He was only concerned about his satisfaction. Oluki never told her aunt about what her husband was doing to her. She was afraid of what her uncle might do to her. Despite her desperate cries for help, those around her turned a blind eye to her suffering. Then finally, Olushi got pregnant at the age of 12. That faithful morning, Olushi started feeling unwell and started to vomit more often. It was then she realized she was pregnant. She cried bitterly and hid herself inside the bathroom. Her whole life was beginning to threaten her. 
what happens when her auntie finds out that her niece is pregnant? So Olu, she kept hiding her pregnancy. She started wearing loose and big dresses to hide the pregnancy. She was so scared her auntie or uncle will notice it. And even during this time, her uncle will still fuss and sleep with her every time her auntie was out to her shop. Well, days came to pass and Olushi's auntie finally found out that Olushi was pregnant. When her auntie knew about this, she beat the hell out of Olushi, including Mr. Emeka. They both asked her in anger for her to tell them who was responsible, but Olushi couldn't alter a word because she was scared of her uncle. Her auntie kept asking, Olushi, who is responsible? Who impregnated you? Tell me who impregnated you. Do you have a boyfriend or did anyone rape you? Upon all the beatings and questions, Oluki only cried without a single word. While Oluchi's auntie was beating her, Mr. Emeka was making some signs to Oluchi, telling her to never open her mouth to say he was responsible and that if she ever tells anyone that he was responsible for the pregnancy, he would deny it and frame her up and end her life. He always said to Oluchi, your auntie will never believe you. I am her husband. She will always take my side. Oluchi was afraid of Mr. Emeka. She didn't tell her auntie that it was her husband who got her pregnant. So her aunt suggested that Oluchi should return to the village because she didn't want to live with a stubborn and spoiled child. But her husband never agreed with that. He suggested that Oluchi should go for an abortion since she was just a child and can't go and live alone in the village. After so much argument, they finally agreed on that decision and they took Olushi to the clinic for the abortion. It was such a painful experience for Olushi that she cried her eyes out. Like two days after the abortion was done, Mr. Remeka started abusing Olushi again. He sleeps with her all the time like before. Olushi was always in pain but he never cared how she felt. This time around, after sleeping with her, he would force her to take some drugs, some kind of tiny drug to take in order to prevent Oluchi from getting pregnant. These drugs were not friendly at all. After taking these drugs, Oluchi always felt unwell, like she was not herself anymore. This drug kept on disturbing her. Sometimes she would be feeling very weak and sick. Then Mr. Emeka came up with a plan. He took Oluchi to the hospital and told the nurses Oluchi was his daughter and that she was stubborn and sexually active and he didn't want her to get pregnant. So they inserted something into Oluchi's body, something she knew nothing about. Due to the thing that was inserted into her body, Oluchi started seeing her periods like three times in a month. That was strange. So Oluchi's auntie started complaining about this. How can someone be seeing her period like four times in a month? Her auntie became worried. So Mr. Hemeka, who didn't want his wife to know what was causing that, secretly took Oluki back to the hospital and they removed the thing that was inserted into her body. After all this, Oluki got infected with some kinds of infections, not sexually transmitted infections, but due to what was inserted into her body. He quickly went and bought over-the-counter drugs, which was used to treat the infection without wasting time. After some days, Mr. Remeka started sleeping with Oluchi again, and then Oluchi got pregnant the second time. He secretly took Oluchi for another abortion, which was so painful. After some time, Oluchi got pregnant for the third time. Oluchi's life was just miserable. Her whole life was under Mr. Remeka's control. She didn't even have time for herself. She was always being abused by her uncle. To cut the whole thing short, Olushi got pregnant like seven times and her uncle took her to the hospital for abortion five good times without his wife's notice. Olushi was 19 years old when she got pregnant for the seventh time. Olushi's seventh pregnancy was when her auntie finally found out again. Her auntie was angry and had to wait for her husband to come so that he will interrogate her because upon all the beatings she gave to Oluchi, she just sat down silent with tears in her eyes. 
Her auntie took her to the hospital for an abortion again, but this time around, the doctor told her if Oluchi was to go through another abortion, she would either die or lose her womb. So Oluchi and her aunt were both in a dilemma, not knowing what to do, so she asked Oluchi in anger who was responsible for her pregnancy. But Olushi was very scared to tell her aunt what had been happening and who the owner of the pregnancy was. So her auntie, with anger and confusion, sent her back home. When they got home, she kept asking Olushi to tell her the truth. If not, she would send her back to the old ratchet house her mother died and left in the village. Olushi became very scared and helpless, not knowing if she could tell her aunt the truth or go back to the village. She was very scared her aunt's husband would kill her or her aunt won't even believe or take her side since her husband was rich and the one providing for her. Her auntie waited for her husband to come back so that the will interrogate her. When he came in the evening, his wife came to him with the issue at hand. There and then he raised his voice up saying, I said it, I said it, it's obviously the gate man. He then lied to his wife how he has been seeing Oluchi and the gate man together and that he suspects him to be responsible since Oluchi hardly go out. Oluchi kept crying and didn't know what to do or say. Although Mr. Emeka warned Oluchi never to mention his name to anyone, she didn't know when it came out of her mouth. Immediately she said it was Mr. Emeka, her husband. Oluchi thought her auntie would be shocked or surprised, but she was not. She only asked if Oluchi was telling the truth, and then Oluchi kept saying yes, he was responsible, but her uncle denied ever having anything to do with her and tried framing the gate man. And with anger, he ran out to the gate man and said, You useless man, how dare you impregnate my niece? How dare you? You must leave this house today. The gate man was confused and surprised at what his boss was accusing him of. Anytime he tries to talk or explain, Mr. Ayodel will shut him up and asked him to go and pack his things out. When the gate man tried to beg, Mr. Emeka quickly moved into his room and packed his things and threw them out of the compound. After he was done and they moved inside the house, they beat Oluchi helplessly. Then her auntie said Oluchi couldn't keep a child for now. Her auntie told her that she still needed to abort the pregnancy because she was too young to keep a child. We have to remove this one. You can't give birth to a bastard. That was all her auntie could say. She wasn't even bothered about the fact that it was her husband who got her sister's daughter pregnant. Oluchi felt very bad and sad. It looks like the whole world has failed her. How can she tell her auntie that her husband was the one who got her pregnant and her auntie wasn't even bothered? Upon a serious augment between Mr. and Mrs. Emeka, Mr. Emeka advised his wife to allow Oluki to give birth due to the doctor's warning against the abortion. So her auntie took all that into consideration and agreed to allow Olushi to give birth. And after she gives birth, she will be sent back to the village. That was when she knew that her situation was getting worse. Everyone had failed her. Oluchi thought her problem would be solved after she had told her auntie, but it continued to get worse. There was no place for her to run. Life was just upside down for her. She couldn't even keep friends. She had no boyfriend to help her because whenever her uncle sees her with any guy, her uncle will beat the hell out of her. So she couldn't keep friends at all. Mr. Emeka kept sleeping with her even though Olushi was pregnant. As time kept going, Oluchi began to wonder if her auntie was even aware of what her husband had been doing to her because she wasn't bothered when Oluchi told her about it. A lot of thinking came through Oluchi's mind. That's not all. Oluchi's auntie has about four kids. Oluchi will cook for the family, clean the house and take her auntie's kid to school. In fact, there was a serious scarcity of water at the place where they stayed Oluchi had to walk a very long distance just to get water to do the, the housework. Life wasn't an easy one for Oluchi. She was passing through a lot of pain. 
Sometimes when Oluchi's elder siblings comes to visit her, Oluchi would always try talking to them about the issue, but they never gave her their listening ear. Watch out for the part two of this story to see how Karma dealt with Oluchi's auntie and uncle. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more cultural tales from the heart of Africa.